So today we're going to go over water source heat pumps and our refrigeration cycle. Four major components in any refrigeration cycle, whether it be freezer, cooler, chiller, air conditioner, compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator, which you can't see, but it's behind that wall there. The only difference in a water source heat pump is the medium that we use to cool our refrigerant or condense our refrigerant. In this case, we're using water because it's a water source heat pump. Most others, typically your residential units, will be air cooled, obviously, with your fan motor outside. So we have a circulating pump here that circulates water through our coaxial condenser coil and our refrigeration circuit is the same as every other piece of equipment. We have a compressor that takes low pressure, low temperature gas, compresses it into a high pressure, high temperature gas through the discharge line into your condenser coil. Now again we're cooling our refrigerant, condensing it with water. Typically on a residential system, you'd be running underground or through a pond or wherever those water lines run and they cool basically with just the, um, the cool temperature that is underground or water in a pond or whatever. So hot gas discharge goes through your condenser coil condenses into a liquid, out of your liquid line, into your metering device. Metering device lowers the pressure, and we flash refrigerant liquid vapor into our evaporator coil, which in turn evaporates back into a vapor and returns through your suction line back to your compressor, low temperature low pressure vapor. Uh, these commercial units do have a few other components just due to the size of the building and because we have to cool our water somehow we'll go through a few of those things. I'll take you down and take a look at what we got extra on the commercial side. So here we have starters for our main circulating pumps for the whole building. So these pumps run constant and circulate water through the building and up to the top floor of the building. So we're constantly moving water around and then each water source heat pump has its own uh, smaller pump like we saw earlier, kind of like this one here, which feeds our boiler. So in the winter we have to heat our water and the boiler here keeps the water warm to a warm enough temperature that we can properly heat with our heat pumps in the winter. This is domestic hot water on this side, completely separate from our cooling and heating loops. So. That's how we heat our water and how we circulate our water through the building. Next we'll go up and see how we keep our water cool in the summer. So, now we're on the roof. Here is our cooling tower. Um, this is a two stage. So we have all our controls here. A fan switch, pump switch, and a heater switch are protected by fuses and overloads for your fan and your pump. Um, I believe this, our thermostats over here, I believe this operates the pump constantly. So, let's see if we can shut the fan off and might be able to hear me better. So there goes our fan. There you can hear me a little better, but 
those pumps in the basement that we just looked at feed water up and through these tubes here and first stage like I said pump runs water over top we turned it up enough that we shut both off so if we crank it down a little more we'll get stage one there goes our pump recently re replaced pump put this pump in last year I believe so this thermostat here is reading our outlet water and we're going to try to maintain about 80 degrees which feeds our condensers the coaxial coils we looked at so we're basically mimicking an 80 degree day outdoor air temperature or in this case water temperature so first stage runs the water over this coil here and we feed water in and back out and back down through our building to each condenser. And then as our water drops, we got a float here. So float valve, if water starts to drop, feed water in as it raises back up, our water stops feeding. So we keep our sump constantly full. Obviously we don't want to run our pump without any water. And then the second stage is gonna be our fan motor. And we're about 80 degrees, so there it goes. So not only are we cooling our water with the pump feeding water over it, but the fan motor is drawing air through here through those coils and out the top of the cooling tower there's your fan motor up there so just some basic operation we do have on the other side when I did this pump our sump thermostat uh, the face here had cracked and it was all corroded inside this is fairly new I put it in last year and you can see the corrosion from just the water and everything else but new sump thermostat reads the sump temperature so in the winter it will kick the heaters on and keep the sump at 50 degrees I believe is the set point so if y'all like this video, subscribe, thumbs up, comment, tell me what I missed. I may have missed something. I'm not used to explaining this shit, so let me know what you think.